Hello and welcome to The Softer Side. I'm your storytelling life coach, Shelley Carney. Today's topic is letting go to make room. Thank you for watching The Softer Side, storytelling therapy and life coaching. Please leave a comment and let me know your biggest challenge when it comes to stress relief and what topics you would like to see in the future. Subscribe and click on the bell to be front row center for new videos. Join us in the friendly, supportive live chat room for our live coaching videos and share the Softer Side channel with your friends and family members who need to reduce the stress and anxiety in their lives. I like this little poster. It says, holding on is believing that there's only a past. Letting go is knowing there's a future. We're going to be talking about that today, uh, how we need to sometimes let go of things in order to make that space available for new things to come into our lives. Feel the fear, but do it anyway. I don't expect myself to be an expert when I am starting out on something. I don't expect to always win. I have a tremendous amount of confidence because I'm not afraid of failing or to experience humiliation, doubt, and disappointment. Because of that, I push forward into the world, open to those experiences. You must learn to live with, manage, and be comfortable with fear and failure if you're going to live an extraordinary life. When you remember that failure is simply a thought, and that fear is normal, and it actually means go, not stop, in our current situation, then you will be able to create so much more of what you want in your life. A major part of this human experience is experiencing fear and failure on a regular basis so we can continue to grow, add value, and evolve. Most of us can hide in comfort away from the world and try to protect ourselves from ever feeling a negative emotion. Then we wonder, why we're not creating the magnificent life that we're capable of creating. Good is the enemy of great. We don't have great lives often because it's so easy to settle for a good life. Ask yourself, what can you be the best at in the world? But even more importantly, ask yourself, what can you not be the best at in the world? and be willing to let that go. When you can start believing and thinking greater than the current circumstances of your life, that's when you will make your current circumstances greater. How many of us are spending our time accommodating for things that we're tolerating instead of just eliminating those things and pursuing different, possibly better opportunities? Greatness is holding fast to a dream independent of the environment and your current evidence. Your current results are evidence of your past thinking. The evidence of your future is a reflection of your current thinking. Jim Collins said, Greatness is not a function of circumstance. Greatness, it turns out, is largely a matter of conscious choice and discipline. William Faulkner said, Always dream and shoot higher than you know you can do. Don't bother just to be better than your contemporaries or predecessors. Try to be better than yourself. Zig Ziglar said, You were designed for accomplishment, engineered for success, and endowed with the seeds of greatness. Now let's hear the story of the promise of something better. There was a young, clever boy named Jack who lived down the street from me a few years ago. One day, Jack sidled into the room where his mother was sitting at her desk, writing. She glanced down at him and saw that he was carrying a very precious vase that her grandmother had given her. With some concern, she said to him, Jack, Please put the vase down before you drop it and break it. I can't, Jack replied. I can't get my hand out of the vase. Of course you can, she said. You got it down in there. 
Jack said, I know, Mom, but it won't come out now. The neck of the vase was very narrow, and his hand had fit neatly inside, and it was now up past his wrist. Jack continued to insist that he could not get his hand out of the vase. Growing concerned, his mother called out to his dad, Carl, would you come here, please? What is it, dear? Carl asked. We need your help. Carl sauntered into the room and, stopping short, raised his eyebrows as he quickly assessed the problem. Carl calmly took control and began gently pulling Jack's arm, trying to extract his hand from the vase without damaging anything. Ouch, Dad, it's stuck, Jack complained as his mother shook her head in consternation. Carl led Jack to the bathroom and tried adding warm, soapy water to his arm and the neck of the vase. Water dripped down their arms to their elbows, and yet the vase only spun around Jack's wrist, splashing them more. Carl then led Jack into the kitchen and sat him on a chair. He took some vegetable oil from the pantry and grabbed a large handful of paper towels, drying his hands and arms before opening the bottle of oil. Carl poured the oil around Jack's wrist and let it seep into the vase. He wiggled and spun the vase again. It still did not budge. Jack fussed. This is a sloppy mess. Carl agreed as he cleaned up the excess oil with the paper towels. I give up, Carl said in desperation as he tried to wipe up the spilled oil. There's slippery, soapy water all over the bathroom and greasy vegetable oil all over the kitchen table. Your mother is getting upset about her grandmother's vase, and I'm out of ideas. Carl collapsed into a kitchen chair and lowered his head into his hands, squeezing his scalp in frustration. I'd give ten dollars right now to know how to get your hand safely out of that vase without breaking it, hurting you, or making an even bigger mess. Really? Jack exclaimed. Then they heard a clinking sound, and Jack slid his hand right out of the vase, which he set carefully on the kitchen table. Carl grabbed the vase and turned it upside down, and a penny plopped out. A penny? Where did that come from? Carl asked Jack. Jack answered, Oh, that's the penny I put inside. I wanted to get it out, so I was holding on to it real tight. Jack demonstrated, closing his fist around the penny. But when you said you would give ten dollars to get my hand safely out of the vase, I let go. Jack opened his fist and mimed, pulling his hand from the vase. Can I have that ten dollars now, Dad? So what do you think? How often do we cling to things when there are nothing in comparison to what could be ours? What things could I release today? that are holding me back? What possibilities exist for my future if I'm willing to let go of my past? When Jack was clutching that penny inside that vase, of course they couldn't get the vase off of his hand. It wasn't until the idea that he could have something bigger, better, and more came to him that he was able to let go of the penny pull his hand out, and reach for that $10. What can we think of in our own lives that maybe we're holding on to, that if we were just to let it go, we would open up the space for something bigger and better to come into our lives? I hope you'll take the opportunity to visit esofterside.com so you can download this ebook on the story of Jack and the Penny. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. I want to share with you an amazing free mini course I've developed for my subscribers to reduce stress and achieve inner peace. This mini course provides tips exercises, and guided meditations to further enhance relaxation and bring calm to a frazzled life. Simply visit eSofterSide.com to get your free mini course. And while you're there, you can also schedule a free coaching call with me 
to address your personal needs when it comes to releasing pain and achieving happiness. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace be with you. Namaste.